Hello, welcome to another of my electronic video. Today, we're gonna do something different. It's that I'm gonna be explaining to you everything you need to know about a UVC germicidal lamp. The most common one that you can find on the market are those quartz tube. This one is based on the CCFL, which stands for the code cathode fluorescent lamp. There's another common version of it, which is known as the CFL, compact fluorescent lamp, or commonly known as cathode fluorescent lamp or hot cathode HCFL, which I have an example here. This is a hot cathode fluorescent lamp, basically by utilizing a tungsten filament coating with some possibly radioactive coating just to ionize the gas inside it. So, bigger can handle much more power and produce much more used on some industrial or hospital sterilization. If compared those lamps together, this one is much more smaller, but still with high efficiency. There's one common within those two lamps. Both uses quartz glass, which is extremely important. And this is one of the reasons is why do not touch it with your bare hand to the glass, which I also made an envelope for this glass lamp. And second one, those two lamp uses a gas mixture called Panning's mixture, which the ratio can be various, just depends on how it's mixed. For a usual standard Panning's mixture, it will be utilizing 98% of neon and roughly 2% of argon, and other noble gases may be used. For this one, it also contains neon, but in a lesser proportion as we can see in later. Those tubes is one thing. Don't touch with your bare hand. Quartz does not like bare hand, especially the oil. So if you do manage to get some oil on your tube, make sure to keep some ethyl alcohol on the hand. So. That's basically it about the lamp. And one thing to be remembered is you can't just dispose this lamp in a normal manner in a house bin. Because due to the European complied safety hazard, this lamp contain a tiny, tiny amount of mercury, which is in the microgram scale. Possibly milligram depends on how much is the lamp being used. Usually, for the bigger compact fluorescent lamp, they will use amalgam, which at the tip of the electro gun. The amalgam will usually selectively collect the mercury, and when it's in an amalgam nation state, mercury will not easily evaporate it. But anyway, we're gonna focus in on to this lamp in the first place. This plant, uh, uh, lamp, unlike this one, requires a much more higher voltage to start. And this lamp, once you start it, will be require lower voltage, but at higher currents. This one will require at high voltage, but at lower currents, which can be simply been drived by an inverter circuit. This is a very famous oscillator here, which is called the Royal Oscillator. I'm gonna be going through into another video, but I'm gonna do it later. But I have a drone circuit diagram of it in one of my electronic section playlist, so be sure to check it out. There's two terminals around here, both are high voltage. I removed one of the capacitors since it's shorted out, so there's only one capacitor. And this capacitor can be used to power the lamp. You simply just plug it in, as been shown of one of the assemblies of. Sometimes if it's not ridiculously dirty, you can just wipe the tube with some clean paper towel and make sure it's nice and clean with no oil residue 
or else it will uh, decrease the efficiency of the outputs. Then you will require to power the driver circuit. This one particularly just requires 12 volts. Some of them really require higher or lower, just depend on the inverter settings. So, in order to reach the 12 volts, I have a big power supply over here. Powered up, more than enough to drive this circuit since it can deliver around 300 watts of power. But anyway, we wouldn't need that much. To power this lamp on now, we just need to connect it to the power supply. Here you can see a beautiful distinguished blue glow. First time we are using the lamp, it will generate quite a lot of mercury. But as the time went on, the mercury uh, then you wouldn't smell much ozone anymore. There is a simple reason behind it, and I'm just gonna compare this to a white background. It's because sometimes there is some residue around the glass, other times because of the composition of the quartz crystalline changes between its in molecular level, which block the highest frequency ultraviolet possible, which is known as the vacuum ultraviolet, which is the lower frequency X-ray. But don't worry, it wouldn't penetrate in that far. Now, when the, when the lamp is running hot, the bluish glow will become much more brighter. If you use anything else, you'll realize around the electrode there is some reddish-orangish glow, which is due to the neon. Now, let me state one safety factor. Do not look straight into the eye, very close to the tube. Approximately stay about a meter away from it and you should be fine, but sometimes just to remember to wear some pers uh, personal safety protection equipment. Um, that basically it's for the safety standard, which I'm just gonna go in through. And make sure one thing, take your own risk. Now, we've covered the basic functions of the lamp. The purple-ish, bluish, beautiful glow is actually due to the mercury, as it jumps down from its electron uh, electron shells, the electron falling back down, it will release a HV, a photon which is similar to the shell which you need to be put it in, in order to reach to that shell, so which you can use the spectroscopy or spectrometer to tell which frequency exactly it is. But anyway, I'm gonna switch off the lamp. You can see it's returned to its state. Now I'm gonna totally turn off this table lamp. Now you can have a better look. This color is also used in many compact fluorescent lamp, except you don't have the fluorescent coating. And now we're gonna moving on to our main topic today. How to tell this is an actual real UVC lamp? For a real mercury lamp, it will produce from a visible spectrum all the way up to a UVC frequency and then a vacuum UV at vacuum UV which most of them is being absorbed by the air itself from the ozone it's generated. But the UVC can penetrate it the air for some distance. So now we're gonna be focusing to tell whether this is real or not. Since most of commercially made UVC lamp sometimes they can be fake as been using some soda lime glass instead of the quartz I'm mentioning about. Others may just be some LED. This actual real LED UVC lamp. But just to look out, the real one, the plate itself is made of gold. And at the top, there's no any phosphor coating, it's just transparent, and you can see a chip. And the windows will be made from a piece of quartz, 
which allowed those high-frequency photons to pass through. To tell this lamp is real in the first place, we'll have to do some fluorescence tests. So here you can see is a cotton bud which had dipped in some europium phosphor. This specific phosphor will only glow in the high UVC spectrum. UVA and UVB would not activate the phosphor as reaching its activation energy in order to fall back down into some lower state energy photon. To tell you that, as the europium glows, it will produce some beautiful orange glow. Here you can see it's totally white. In order to prove it, I'm gonna switch open the lamp. You can see there's absolute no orange spot. But if we open to the actual UVC, it glows with a distinct orange, if you can see here. I'm gonna make it more obvious. It definitely glows. This is also one of the properties of UVC. And the second topic that you can be talking about is if this you're using other phosphorescent compound, for example, a simple piece of A4 paper can tell you. I'm just gonna put it here. A simple piece of A4 printing paper has been bleached and been whitened with some fluorescent compound to make it look much more white. But this fluorescent compound, when it's activated with a very high energy photon, just for example, the UVC, it will fall right down and produce in the visible glow section as a beautiful bluish glow. Here you can see, very, very distinct blue glow much more distinct from the normal non-bleached paper if you see here, non-phosphor and this one contained the phosphor very very beautiful blue glow and I'm gonna just turn it off now the second properties of this high frequency photon is it's easily been blocked by a piece of plastic or glass which may sound surprise so I'm gonna show you here. Even I say the word photon, it means light particles. Here I have a glass cu uh, cup or a beaker if you want to call it as. Mm, you can use soda lime, but this one is made specifically using borosilicate with boron trioxide. So I'm gonna put the lamp in. Now, when we turn it on, you shouldn't see that beautiful, distinct glow of the pa on the paper, the, uh, the fluorescent compound being activated. Now, no more beautiful blue glows, but watch what's happening if I lift away the cup. Yep, the phosphor has been activated, and the orange glow you can see, but if I put it just right back in, all the UVC has been blocked, just leaving you with a beautiful glow of mercury discharge lamp as normally you see it on the street. And that's it for today's video. Hope you like it. If you do, please consider to like, share and subscribe. And stay tuned and I will see you next time.